So Peter Racy here, Anzac Day Precinct YouTube channel and it seems completely and utterly appropriate that on this most unusual of Anzac Days in 2020 that I'm here um, at what was a fountain at what was an operating fountain for a few years from about 1965 through to the mid 1975s um, it was an operating fountain until such time as vandals just made it totally and utterly inoperable um, which was a great shame um, now the background to this particular fountain is that it is actually from King George Square uh, and I'll edit in a photo of what King George Square used to look like before the new King George Square car park and um, square was built on top of it by Clem Jones. Now the next thing we need to do is to do some measurements. blue tiles um, it is clearly a fountain and from that end to this end uh, it is roughly it is roughly uh, 8 meters long and approximately 5.5 meters wide and the total width from the very outside to the very outside uh, is approximately uh, 12 meters by nine and a half meters approximately this inner pathway is around two meters wide varies a little bit um, but approximately that now moving on there is evidence of the power supply um, still uh, sitting here. One would hope it has probably been terminated back at a uh, further junction. Um, and this fountain was actually constructed uh, around 1948. Uh, but there was 20 years of thought and analysis before the fountain was built in front of uh, City Hall and it really didn't last that long at City Hall considering all things before this particular part was relocated to here. The photos that I've examined of the original King George Square indicate that there were two fountains other end of a fairly long skinny square that used to sit in Albert Street. However, I suspect that the two fountains were amalgamated to form this larger fountain. Uh, because if you scale off what is sitting in the pictures against what is actually sitting here, it doesn't quite match, but I could be wrong. Here is the lid, and I'm assuming that all the old uh, pumps for the fountain are probably situated underneath that. Um, I only point this out, there is no way known to man that they are going to be serviceable or reusable. A relatively short distance to where the fountain actually is. So since the fountain was relocated here, Obviously there's been some landscaping done and all these trees, which now completely and utterly obscure the fountain, uh, would have been nothing but mere seedlings. Uh, the 60 odd years ago that uh, this was relocated here. And so removing the fountain from this location um, and using it to a very respectful uh, purpose indeed I think makes eminent sense 
especially considering that the local councillor probably doesn't even know of its existence. So a little bit more infrastructure here uh, in relation to the fountain as it used to operate. Now this is not the first time that I've actually tried to save and relocate and repurpose this particular uh, fountain, but one has to be quite stoic uh, in these tasks and jobs and keep putting up ideas uh, to the Lord Mayor of the day, um, who after all is the elected representative and is the one who bears the burden of office, which is not something that is on my shoulders. So what is the proposal I'm putting forward? So the proposal I'm putting forward is as follows. In the first instance, my research leads me to believe that Anzac Park at Tawong is the very first Anzac Park in the world. And that title, that honour, deserves special celebration. Next, at Cannon Garland Place at the Tawong Cemetery, there are the lamp posts that used to go with this particular fountain uh, when it was situated in Albert Street. And now those lamp posts are an integral part of Cannon Garland Place. Beautifully symmetrical uh, in the support of the um, stone of remembrance and the cross of sacrifice and I think that to complement Councillor James Mackay's vision in Anzac Park that this fountain suitably refurbished um, back to a working fountain right on top of the hill right next to the um, Lone Pine uh, lit at night, subtly so, uh, would make a very special celebration of the title, the very first Anzac Park in the world. Um, and that, I will grant you, is an ambitious uh, project. Uh, and it is full of little technical issues because the various other times I have looked at relocating this, there are issues in relation to the depth of the fountain, uh, being a water hazard, the swimming pool bylaws as they current op currently operate. Um, one solution to that was a stainless steel mesh, one to two millimetres under the water level, so that there was no possibility at all that anyone could fall into it and drown. Uh, Underneath that stainless steel mesh, one can obviously mount the LED lights. Um, but multifaceted LED lights, um, where they can be clearly seen from a roadway, uh, are prohibited lighting fixture. Uh, and so care needs to be um, brought to bear as to how the LED lighting is activated within the fountain. Uh, not to fall foul of those particular uh, bylaws. So there are effectively public health and safety bylaws, workplace health and safety bylaws, traffic safety bylaws. There's a whole plethora that one has to navigate, but it's not impossible. And I just think that this would make an absolute stunning piece of kit on top of the hill and a great addition to the Lone Pine, a great addition to Cannon Garland, uh, memorial tree, a great addition to the Queensland Nurses Memorial Grove and hopefully in time a great addition to the Chaplains, Australian Chaplains Defence Grove uh, that Peter Collins is currently working on. Um, so on this Anzac Day in 2020 that's the pitch. Um, thank you for listening.